<laughs> well, that was one of the questions from the Discord. And it's a very broad question, and we can kind of wax poetic on it. Um, it was, I think it was uh, Frankie on the Discord asked, uh, what do you think is the skill or attribute most responsible for winning a Grammy? Um, obviously, lots of ways to break that down. Do you have, do you have, have you been reflecting on it of like, you know, what does it mean to win a Grammy? Does it mean something different? Obviously, you said that if you, probably if you'd won eight years ago, it would have felt great. But it's like, cool, I, I got to do some engineering with Eric Valentine on one of his projects, whereas this one, you really spearheaded it, spearheaded it. Is there, do you have thoughts about the Recording Academy, what a Grammy <clears throat> means, how, you're, how you've gotten to this place, you know, yeah. thoughts generally? No one cares about the Grammys till they're nominated. And then it's, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Um, I, I, I thought about this a lot. I had a, a good friend, my friend Michael Harris, who's a great engineer in town. He won uh, years ago, I want to say seven or eight years ago for a record, the Vampire Weekend record that he helped record. And I remember talking to him um, just being like, how's it feel? And, and, he, and he kind of felt very similar to like how I feel where it's like, it's like, uh, I don't, I don't know if I deserve, you know, there's like that. I don't know if I should really get a Grammy for this, you know? And so he ended up winning and his dad was a, uh, uh, a television producer. Um, and he was talking to his dad and his dad had won Emmys or, you know, for like production stuff and technical stuff. And his dad had a great point, which was that uh, you're not winning for just that record. You know, you're winning for, your body of work up until that point. Like, and if you look at it through that lens, um, even though with this, with this particular record, I'm proud of it and, and I'm, I'm stoked on it. And I think it was a great record. Um, it just feels healthier to look at it through that lens where it's like, cool, this is the 15, 20 years of hard work. Um, and now there's the kind of this milestone to show for it, you know? Um, so that's how I feel about it. Like, it's like, cool. It's a great metric to have under my belt. Um, I don't know how it'll pan out professionally. You know, I think there's a lot of people who think that like, you Does know, the, the price work go just up? rains in. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I'm still trying to figure that out, you know. Um, so who, who, I don't know, um, you know, it, but it's certainly, I think that the, the biggest thing it gives me is just like confidence to know that like, okay, I can go into any room and um, know that I can compete you know, at, at the highest level. And I, and I kind of felt that like before, like when I was in a room with other engineers, like I just feel confident, I know what I'm doing, but now it's like, okay, now, now there's a trophy to kind of, to show that, you know, and I can forget about it. I don't have to think about it anymore. Like however nervous I felt about winning a Grammy or whatever thought I put into it, like that's just now out of my head and I can kind of just get on with my life, get on with my career and just work on records. And if, if, if I get nominated again, great. But like, I, I think this is like that thing where it's a hump that you get over. And personally for my own self-confidence has just been a great, just a great boost um, and a great solidifier of my, my work in this industry thus far, you know, in my career. There were some, there were some questions about that topic, about confidence, about imposter syndrome, about yeah. those feelings. Did you, you said that um, even going into this, that you didn't feel like maybe you deserved it in some way? Was that, that's what you're referring to, this album? Totally, yeah. I mean, just like, even from when Annie asked me to mix it, I was nervous. Because again, like, it was like, oh man, this is, this is an opportunity. Like I've mixed records before, but never like something like this, where it felt really close to the chest in the sense that I'm a fan of her music. I helped shepherd it, but it's also like, it's really in the, in the lane that I want to be operating in musically. So it just felt like, fuck, this is a real opportunity. Um, and yeah, like she could have hired anyone to, you know, Tom Elmhurst mixed her previous record, you know? So it's like, it was great that she had that confidence in me and, and that it worked out. But up until I was delivering masters, I felt, that I didn't know what I was doing. You know, like, I don't think the imposter syndrome ever goes away when you're kind of operating slightly outside your comfort zone, which is kind of when you operate the best. I think you're yeah. always doing your best work when you're a little bit nervous, slightly unprepared, um, you know, just like- I, I, just I totally on agree. Your toes. And no, I think I totally imposter agree. syndrome, I think serves you well a little bit. You know, it keeps you in check. The last thing you wanna do is to not have imposter syndrome and to just have fucking ego 
Um, and I, I don't think that solicits your best work. I don't think it makes you a great person to work with. Um, so I think imposter syndrome is kind of a, it's a healthy thing to have in, in this line of work, or at least a little bit of it. You know, you don't want to be a total like melting puddle of, uh, you know, indecisiveness, but yeah. you know, you, you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of that. Well, I, it makes me think of what I think is, uh, in my humble opinion, the most underrated live with Matt Rad, which is the one with Peter Asher. Uh, so for people who have only turned in, tuned in in the last couple of months or something, go watch that full episode with Peter Asher. And we talk about this and he at 77, he's won, he's at number one songs as an artist. He's managed huge hit artists. He's, produ he's won Grammy for producer of the year twice, like 15 years apart. And he still has imposter syndrome in the middle of a record. It's like, don't really know what I'm doing. Don't know where this is going to end up. Uh, and he's been doing it for longer than any of us can imagine doing it successfully. Um, so I think that's absolutely right that imposter syndrome doesn't go away. And there's a benefit to feeling out of your comfort zone. And not, like you said, and not really knowing what you're doing. I mean, again, I've, I've said this before in these lives, but that's part of the reason that I'm nomadic right now is because I just felt like I was getting a little comfortable in the same space with the same gear doing the same things. And now I'm running around and it's a little bit stressful, but I think I'm making great records because of it. That sometimes um, putting yourself in a position where you don't know what you're doing is how you are going to find new things to do. Um, so it's good. It's good to hear that. I, I assume uh, even after this, this will, the, I don't know how much has, has worn off of the initial excitement, but I'm sure you'll put yourself in more positions to uh, freak yourself out and see what you can get into. Yeah. I mean, fuck, why not? You know, at this point. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, all of this content is free. There's no secret knowledge here. There's no Patreon. We don't read ads. We don't have sponsors. We're just trying to build a knowledge base. All that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody. Thanks so much.